Welcome to Bionic Buzz. I'm here with my colleague, Steve Sievers, and we're here today with producer, director, writer, and editor, David P. Levin. And the P is important, David P. Levin, you're looking him up anywhere. Um, and we are, uh, David, I think you've had an amazing career, right, already. You, you've done a, a lot of things for MTV, rockumentaries, like on Madonna and Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. um, you've done shows for TV land. And now we're here to talk about one of your most recent projects, which is a very exciting project, Viral Vignettes. Yeah, viral vignettes was uh, was really like almost everything I've done has been a labor of love. Uh, and my career originally started uh, with the intention of going into making films and writing, and I had sold a bunch of screenplays. And then, as life often happens, my career went in another direction, where I started to get a lot of success with documentaries and with pop culture and. So you go with what's working, and I ended up doing a lot of work for MTV. I created shows for them and TV Land and the whole Viacom empire. Um, and then kind of COVID hit, and all of a sudden we're all stuck at home, and there's no work to be had, um, and it was a little depressing, and people were just sort of like, oh. And we didn't know what was going to happen, and I was feeling like I needed to be creative. And so feeling entrepreneurial, as I have in the past, uh, I came up with this idea. And the idea was we are all sitting at home in this pandemic, and people are doing uh, comedy from their bathrooms and concerts in their living rooms and talk shows in their basements. But there was no, nobody was doing scripted comedy. Scripted comedy had come to a dead halt. Done. And since I had loved doing scripted stuff and uh, I had lots of friends who were writers, uh, I said, well, let's, we've got, we've got iPhones, let's put on a show. <laughs> so, so I made a few calls. The first call I made was to Fred Stroppel, who ended up becoming our story editor. He's a good friend who is also one of the best and most unsung writers I've ever seen. He's done a lot of plays, a lot of off-Broadway. He hasn't done a ton of TV and a ton of film. And so I said, okay, well, he's got a lot. And he was like, yeah, okay. He's always kind of a yeah, okay guy. And I called up Don Most, who was a friend, because I had met him uh, doing a show for TV Land, as it happens. And then we had done a pilot with him and Anson Williams. And I called Don, and Don is very much a yes and type of guy also. And he goes, okay, it sounds interesting. How's it going to work? And I explained this idea. The idea is everybody's at home. Uh, Zoom, people didn't know what Zoom was yet. But people are sitting at home. They're making FaceTime calls at that point And Skype, Zoom was just like, what the heck is that? And uh, so we started, he's like, okay. And the idea was to do scripted comedy. And the idea, though, was not to do sketch comedy like SNL, although we all have, have loved SNL at, at times. I said, I want to do something a little bit more interesting. I want to do one-act plays. But I don't want them to be more than five or ten minutes because I don't want people to get bored. And I want to be able to attract good actors uh, who would say yes, maybe, to a five or ten-minute commitment, but not necessarily to a half. I didn't want to do a feature film, you know. Writing it would be harder, directing would be harder, it'd be like watching all this on a Zoom, it didn't make sense. But five or ten minutes felt like the sweet spot. And in fact, most of them came around ten, some came a little less, one or two came a little more. And, um, and called a couple of people who I knew who were never produced writers, and uh, a couple of veteran writers, including William Bickley, who has created tons of TV shows and was a showrunner and a writer for shows like... Love American Style, Happy Days, Love Boat, Perfect Strangers, Family Matters. I mean, he's like, you know, step by step. Uh, the guy's resume is a mile long. And everyone's like, yeah, we'll play. So Don was the first actor to say yes. And then Jim Meskimen, uh, who is a terrific actor, uh, also an impressionist, also said yes. I've known him for a number of years. And then I, we started sort of doing something virally, which was Don called a few people and I called a few people and we sort of got our friends together or people that, that we had known or met or, or worked with over the years. And over time, we started doing it. And so literally the idea hit less than a week, when, less than a week into lockdown. 
Uh, I had all this equipment where I knew how to take people and, and keep their video and their audio separate so that I didn't have a split screen. Like a lot of things you see are just split screen and especially early on. I didn't want to do just a split screen thing. I wanted to be able to cut back and forth and I knew I could isolate their video and their audio so that we can edit it and so that we could take the best takes and the best and so we started doing them. We shot the first one with Barry Bostwick, who is an amazing actor, and um, he has done Broadway. He he originated the role of Danny Zuko on, in Greece. He was in Rocky Horror Picture Show as Brad. He was the mayor on Spin City. He's been you've seen him a million times. Great character actor. He said yes. Um, we shot one with him and Yvonne Young, who was on Third Watch, and then it just sort of steamrolled, and we started doing more and more and more. And at a certain point, I think, we, we did 11 of them, and we ran them every week. And the way we sort of got everybody to say yes was to create interesting plays that, that the actors could sink their teeth into, that they would say, oh yeah, this is an interesting character. And we also got in touch with the Actors Fund, and they were totally great and they gave us support and they didn't give us money but the whole thing was done without a budget and uh everybody volunteered their time the writers and the and the actors and and me as an editor and director and also writer and um and then they gave us a page and we said okay watch the show and donate we did the episodes ran for 11 weeks in a row starting about less than a month into covid uh, and going all the way through July. And at that point I collapsed. It was the summer. My daughter was out of remote school and there was a lot of other things. And I said, well, maybe we'll come back to it. By the time September rolled around, people were starting to get a little busy again. You know, from March until June, people were uh, bored at home. So we got all these great actors to say, yeah, I got nothing to do. I'm sitting at home. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll come and play. And, uh, we got some amazing work from uh, some people that I've had tremendous respect for for a very long time. Very cool. Um, my favorite aspect from the episodes I've seen is you mentioned about the editing aspect earlier because you really just have two screens and two people talking, but the way it's mm -hmm. edited and people even find ways to move around in the, can the room behind them and stuff. So. I guess talk about finding creative ways to make it interesting because you people are ADHD. You know, you have the perfect timeline around ten minutes, but I think the editing aspect that was something always new popping up on the screen. Well, you know, my 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 early 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 background was as as an editor, and I just I wanted this to be something that would be interesting and keep it moving. Um, and also by cutting it up, you know, some of them let's face it, they some of them didn't learn their lines. Some of them were definitely using uh, cue cards. They were pasting paper up here and paper here and paper here and paper down there. You can even see some people looking at, I mean, in one in one take, we had somebody hold, literally was holding a script. I'm like, could you please put your script down while you're performing? <laughs> um, it was like SNL. You can still, sometimes you can see them reading off the cue cards. You know? <laughs> totally. But, you know, we were able to do it over and over. And so that, that sort of led to some of the pacing of it. Um, uh -huh. And yeah, like you said, I wanted to keep it visually interesting, and there's only so much to, you can do. I said uh, the other day when we were um, putting together the Q&A, I said, yes, I had the whole thing storyboarded out and, the, and worked with the DPs to make sure the shots were just right. Um, there's not a lot you could do. I wanted to keep it as simple as possible so that the actors didn't have to put in more than a couple of hours of work because, like I said, people were donating their time. And... Uh, and I didn't want it to be too long for the writers. And so we kept it simple, but where we could, and especially with somebody like Don, Don uh, and Anson Williams, who directed one of the pieces, uh, also wanted to wanted wanted it to have some movement. And they, they definitely helped open up the uh, the show in a way that, that, that kept their episodes moving very well and very in a very interesting way. Yeah, and one thing I thought was amazing was just the stories. I mean, the stories were all so interesting and especially I think during that COVID time, you know, and, and very relatable, extremely yeah. relatable and really understanding what people were going through and, and yet funny at the same time. And I, it's hard to pick because I, you know, I love the one with Renee Taylor. Oh my gosh, so amazing. She's 
like there he is. And then um, the Don Most episode with the therapist, that was really, you know, interesting as well. And I mean, they were all just great in their own way. And uh, and the one with Barry Bostwick, and I think um, when he's talking to his money manager. So it, 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 there were just so many, all of them were great and, and relatable. And I think really a, a stamp in time, right? During this, uh, capturing this historical situation we've all had to go through. It's interesting when you look at them, and thank you for those kind words. Uh, it's interesting when you look at them now, they're all kind of a snapshot. They're all kind of, at this point, they're almost, um, we were sort of in an ignorant place. We didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know where we were. We had all these people who were getting sick, people that we were losing. And um, I didn't want to I didn't want to deal with the negative aspects of what was going on, honestly. We had enough negativity. Um, I didn't want to deal with the politics at the time. I wanted anybody to be able to tune in and, and not say, oh, you're definitely, you're not, you definitely lean this way or you lean that way. I wanted to do this, something that any of, of my friends, no matter what their political leanings, could watch. And I also didn't want to be, bring people down. There was so much stuff going on on screen that were just... And I didn't want to deal with the sickness itself. I didn't want to deal with the COVID itself. But I wanted to deal with almost like this unusual set of circumstances, this extraordinary set of circumstances that are hitting ordinary people. It's almost like, you know, the Twilight Zone in a way. Uh, you know, ordinary people in extraordinary circumstances. And that was all of us at that time. And now if you look at it, it's almost like a time capsule of that moment. Most of the stuff in there feel so dated now because we're coming into a new place. Um, so it's so, so we wanted to reconnect to these particular episodes and put them up. Uh, here we are almost a year over a little over a year later and give people a second chance to watch them. I don't think tons of people uh, may have caught them at the time. And it just sort of puts where we are in perspective to where we were uh, just a year ago and to give the actors fund another chance to sort of get some money you know people were hit so hard during the past year and the actors fund has been there for decades uh, not just for actors but for everybody who works in the theater and performing arts whether they are in theater or film or tv or opera or dance or whatever it is. And it's not just the people who are on stage, it's the people who are backstage, it's the people who sell the tickets, it's the people who do the makeup, it's the people who are at the concession stands, it's the people who, you know, turn the lights on and off, it's the people who are doing tech, everybody, anybody. And so when I when we originally came up with the idea and I originally said, well, what's another incentive to get some of these actors to, to play and to be creative during this time? The Actors Fund was probably one of the most reputable charities out there right now. They, they, they do for so many people and they give to so many people and they fund the Actors Home in Englewood, New Jersey, and they have all sorts of, of help, financial help and, and emotional help. and. Um, and so you will hear on, on Saturday um, the actors who helped on this talk about some of their own personal experiences with the Actors Fund and why they wanted to get involved in this. And the other aspect of that is that uh, it'll give us another chance for people to hopefully make a donation, to enjoy the show, to watch the show, and to click and donate a couple of bucks here or there, or thousands. If you want to give thousands of dollars, that's fine too. But if you only have a little bit, especially, or if you're in the performing arts and you need help, the Actors Fund is there. So either way, come watch the show, and I think I think you'll have a good time. I think you'll see some some uh, some favorite actors and actresses, and get some really fun stories that perhaps you can relate to. You'll you'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll kiss ten bucks goodbye, as they say, and. Um, and you know, and we're really proud of what we did. We think we uh, we think we got a really good team. We would love to do more of these, yeah. but the future will, you know. Cool. I'm, so I'm talking way too much. This what Saturday, that? right, May eighth. What time exactly? And you guys, so, so you're screening all of them together, and you have like a what a Q and A with the cast, I assume. Yeah, there's a Q and A with the cast. So they all start. Okay, so you want to go to viralvignettes.com. 
is where it's going to be Saturday, May 8th. It is uh, 8 o'clock where I am in uh, on the East Coast, 5 o'clock uh, on the West Coast, and, you know, Central Time is whatever Central Time is. Nobody, nobody, you know, people, no, people do live there. Um, and it'll be on uh, YouTube, uh, but if you go to VavaVignettes.com, you'll see it there. I believe it'll be up on Facebook. Um, and it'll also be up for a week. And I think what's going to happen is we're going to have a short version of it uh, this week for it. It's going to be several hours long. And then there'll be a director's cut, which just goes on forever, uh, a week later. Um, but you will be able to see it. Hopefully you'll tune in on Saturday. And then my guess is that we will run it for about a week afterwards. But uh, try to tune in live because a lot of us are going to be on the uh, chat uh, and we'll be answering questions from viewers. Great. And, and David, do you have uh, any other projects that you'd like to talk about that you're working on right now? Or obviously viral vignettes is the focus. Right now, uh, I am 24-7 in, uh, in the editing room. I'm here right now. Uh, and uh, that'll be done in a couple of days. Working on some other projects. Always have stuff in development. I'm working on a... Um, on a comedy series with uh, Fred Stroppel that uh, we'll be talking about very soon, and always um, always collaborating with uh, with Don Most on uh, new and exciting activities, and looking for more stuff to do. So very that's nice. where I am. Well, I'd love to follow your journey on social media. Where can we follow you? You can follow me at Popgo Culture uh, on Twitter. That's the main thing, uh, and um, you know, follow Pop Goes the Culture TV on YouTube to to see all the viral vignettes, um, and also my talk show Pop Goes the Culture, and I guess that's it. That's pretty much it. And on Facebook, it's it's Pop Goes the Culture TV and Pop Goes the Culture fans. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us today on Bionic Buzz, David, and we're excited. So we will see you May 8th at 5 p.m. Pacific uh, with the entire cast, or most of the cast, I believe, of Viral Vignettes. And it's going to be a really fun uh, evening, and also it's going to do a lot of good because we're going to try, you're going to try to raise money for the Actors Fund. Oh, we are going to raise money for the Actors well, Fund. You're right. You are going to raise a lot of money for the Actors Fund. Jackie so, and Stephen, thank you for having me. This was really oh, thank fun. Thank you, David. Yeah. Thank you so work. much, and, and we'll see you soon. Terrific. All right. Okay. Thanks, guys. Bye.